So, is Neji's death a good thing or a bad thing? Actually, I think it's one of the best things to happen in the Naruto chapters recently. And a part of myself wants to kill myself for saying that because Neji is without a doubt my favorite, my absolute favorite side character in part one. You know, I used to prefer the Hyuga clan over the Uchihas before they had all these hacks powers and god modes and eternal my get kills and stuff like that. But Neji has always been one of my favorite characters. But I say that his death is one of the best things to happen is because Naruto has really been lacking the surprise element that it used to have all the time. Like some fans have, you know, been complaining that it's too predictable. You know, um, they can predict what's going on. There's been a lot of predictions on YouTube and a lot of the predictions have come true. And the last thing that I could think of that made me say, oh my God, what the fuck? Like chapter 614 did, like Neji's death did to me, was when we found out that Toby was Obito. And that's not even as big as Neji's death as far as like be it being unexpected because as soon as Toby was announced or he was shown you know years ago people the first thing people thought were was Obito I don't care what you say even if you don't like Toby being Obito you knew somewhere in the back of your mind it was a possibility that Toby could be Obito but no one saw Neji's death coming. I saw many predictions of who was going to be the next death in the fourth great ninja war. And it was on nobody's list. Neji was not on anyone's list, including mine, because I made one too. And something else the Naruto series has been lacking lately is the war feeling like a war. And this is really good in that sense. It shows you that, you know... That your friends could die, that you're actually in the war, lives are at stake. And it's good to see someone else, rather than some nameless shinobi getting impaled, someone that you actually care about and that you actually have an attachment to, and that the main hero has an attachment to actually dying. That is great for those of you who say, you know, this, doesn't, this doesn't feel like a war, it just feels like a big argument, and they should be slapping each other with fucking gloves or something. Because I'm not going to lie, at one point it did seem like that because it was nothing but talking going on for like three or four chapters. I'm like, what the fuck? It's supposed to be a war. Why aren't you guys fighting? And even during some fights, it just felt like a fight and not a war. And I know this will help Naruto develop more as a character. I don't think Naruto's done developing and growing because even he said to Obito that he's not going to let any of his friends die. And that is childish thinking. It's okay to, you know, want that, but you're not... You're not sure. You're not sure. Look at his dad. His dad, the fourth Hokage. Hokage, one of the best ninja of his time or any time of that matter. He died protecting someone that he loved. So for Naruto to realize that, you know, stuff like that can't be helped, I'm, I think that's really good for his character. And even Obito said, you know, that's nonsense. Because honestly, to me, this did not feel like a war up until 614 because no one died. Well, I'm going to say 613 because that's when shit really got real. When the Juby blew up the headquarters and, you know, Chicago and stuff. That's really when it got real. But it got really real when someone that we actually cared about died. I'm not going to say that we don't care about Chicago because Chicago is an awesome character. You know, I love, I love how he's able to think on his feet real fast, just like Shikamaru. But... You know, you know, I'm closer to Neji than I am with Shikaku, so seeing someone that I actually care about gives it the better feeling of danger, I'll say. I haven't really felt any danger in the manga since Madara was fucking up the Kage since it was obvious that the Kage's were no match to Madara. That's the last time, the last few chapters before 613 and 614, I really didn't get that feeling. But he truly lived as a ninja and died as a shinobi. He died an honorable death. And his character is pretty much developed all the way. It, his character, I mean, you can go as far as saying that his character has been fully developed since the end of part one. You know, he didn't have, you know, as big of a goal as some other characters have. So I can see why Kishimoto did what he did. And he also did it because he knew that people were expecting Guy, Lee, 
um, Kakashi, Sakura, and Hinata. That, that's the five biggest people, you know, as of right now, that everyone's been suspecting of dying. And I don't see anything else coming up topping the the feeling that we got when Ed, when Neji died because it literally came out of nowhere. No one expected that. Even if Naruto dies, even if the main character, Naruto Uzumaki, if he dies, people are expecting that because Naruto said himself that he may die if he goes up against Sasuke. So if that does happen, you know, there are people who kind of already knew that. So I don't see anything else being as unexpected as Neji's death. 614 is truly a legendary chapter, or at least it will be. People will be talking about this chapter for a long time to come. And let's be real, the only thing that could top this, Neji's death, as, like, in the unexpected way, anyway, would be is is if Hashirama came back, and him and Madara and Tsunade had, like, a big-ass orgy or something. That's the only thing that could top it. Not saying more awesome things won't happen, or more you know, unexpected deaths won't happen, but, you know, you, you can't get more unexpected than Neji, and that is really what I loved about Naruto, like, some things that I did not think was going to happen did happen, and that really hasn't been going on lately, like, pretty much everyone knew the Jubi was going to be revived, everyone knew that Obito and Madara were, were working together, pretty much, well, not everyone, but there have been some theories about it, but, you know, there, there I go again, theories have been about it. But there's been no theories about Ninja dying, so I think it was really good for a story, you know, kind of given that Naruto, the old school Naruto feel again. But Neji will be forever missed. He is, like I said, my favorite side character ever. Rest in peace, Neji Hayuga. Your sacrifice was not a vain, hopefully, anyway. But he died like a G. He went out like a boss. You know, he saved his two best friends, his cousin and one of his, one of his best friends. I would like to see Lee go ham because he was promised a rematch with Neji and now that he's not going to get that, you know, he will probably be hurt and I just want to see somebody go ham. But tell me what you guys thought about the video. Do you think Neji's death was a good idea or a bad idea? Story-wise, anyway, not your personal feelings because it would have been somebody else personally for me. But I think Neji's death, like, pushed the story where it needed to go right now. But tell me what you guys thought about it. This has been JV the Shiha. Like, comment, subscribe. Rest in peace, Neji, and I'm out.